creative people who dedicate their entire life mm. to making something better for the world. Is let, that, me, let me explain what anybody that knows an artist and you know someone that's giving that, if you know an artist, there's only one thing you can say, give, or ask them when you see them. There are two words. Thank you. Ah, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we're going to go over seven success tips from Kanye West. None other. I don't really have to explain this guy. What I will say is my favorite are between four and six. I think six gets the edge for me. Let's get back into it. The interesting balance of making enjoyable music that also had truthful information in it, it was, it was like always a very, very fine line. A fine line of when to break the high in a way because there's a lot of you, you know like uh dance music like four on the floor it seems like it's trying to just be on, strictly the high and never break it never give any type of extra information just strictly be the smoothest drug possible and with backpack rap it was always like this uh responsibility that we felt to you know our our parents, our ancestors, and to our generation at that time to use our platform of the drum to educate with it. And we, we took it as a, a responsibility more than the responsibility of like personal wealth. And I think that was the beginning first notes of any Steve Jobs comparison before I even knew to be to have the audacity to compare myself to Steve Jobs. There was uh, that, that idea of the bins in the backpack, the mix of the information, the responsibility to my parents who are educators, and the understanding that it had to be a bit dumbed down. It had to be accessible in a way. The fact that that is there, you know, and my respect for that, and the fact that I came from that underground place is that is the balance that is the anchor for a college dropout to work. That it has to be anchored in an entire community of people that, um, you know, believed in a certain type of uh, anti-radio music. And, and I, you know, I guess radio has a connotation because so many people are like, it's so formulaic when people figure out a formula that works for radio. Walt Disney, I don't know about himself, but due to his success and what he did with films, when they decided to start selling t-shirts, they went and got, um, I don't know the exact story, but let's just say this is with the story. They went out and got a license and deal to say, let's put some, um, let's put our logo on some t-shirts. And it was simple as that. And now you have like Mickey Mouse t-shirts, right? My take, let me go to Paris and get my ass kicked for 15 years and learn how to make clothes for real and then let me sell a t-shirt with that level of knowledge. You know, I don't want to sell anything that I'm not extremely knowledgeable about. If I go into beauty, it's gonna take some years, you know, before, you know, it goes, it can't happen in six months. It's gonna be at least a year and a half, two years before the first product comes out. Cause I have to have so many no's, I have to learn about it, you know? And this would be me working next to experts. It takes, I don't, I just don't rush product based off my name. It has to, the product has to be, you know, something that I can stand behind. A product has to be a contribution to society. 95, which is the year which I actually drew it. And somebody should have killed me for how bad this actually was, but. But this is almost like a premonition of a sort of, because, you know, you were like this at the end of your car accident. You were in the bed like this, and you thought it was your deathbed. And right. So I would never draw myself dead ever again. You ever find time to do this anymore? Seldomly. Now drawing, I just use it as a language. Like, I want it to look like this. I love to draw, but I just love music more. See, my thing, thing about the drawings is I couldn't turn them up loud enough. I want to do something where people have it on all the time. And basically now what my music is, is a soundtrack to millions of people's lives. You couldn't get that feeling from art school. I couldn't get it. You know, and how to, you know, take the elements of greatness and only the elements that can be understood in that year 
that is coming out and forevermore though you know so a moment like dark fantasy or like you know like on uh, all lights like and you've kind of equated yourself to all these different people you know da vinci walt disney steve jobs michelangelo and he's asked how would you define a genius in that context but also why do you feel the need to call yourself that because otherwise i'm called celebrity i'm called nigger i'm called rapper and when they use the word celebrity, nigga, or rapper, it's not in a positive way. <laughs> and all these things, all those words can be used in an extremely positive way. What's up, my nigga? You know, but that's not the way it's used. Mm. So I have to define who I am. You know, all of my aspirations are things that currently only 60 year old white people do. Mm. So I have to redefine and let people know exactly who I am. and and. It's not letting them know by, you know, wearing a suit or letting them know by wearing a Rolex or letting them know by, you know, bragging about how much money uh, a sponsorship made on top of a rap. It's letting them know by saying, let's start with this. I'm a creative genius. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, real quick, going to get back into the last tip in a second. Just want to thank Annabelle Gonzalez for recommending I do this video. That's why this one was done. If anybody else has a suggestion, go ahead and mention it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions specifically about anything Kanye said, other than that, share this video. And plus, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Never raised me to ask for a handout. Like a lot of people that got into this game, they walking around with somebody else's chain on or driving somebody else's car and didn't even pay for the shoes that they got on their feet. My mother had a decent job, you know what I'm saying? But she gave me a little allowance, $15, $20 a week, and I had to go out and get my own job at age 15. Matter of fact, at 14, I was cutting hair in a barbershop. So it was instilled in me to go out and just get it. And that, that may be me be a leader around a lot of black men like even my father had i had two fathers in my life i had my real father that i was in contact with and my stepfather that stayed there with my mother and everybody was instilling that responsibility in me that nothing in life is given to you a lot of times i feel like a lot of people just rapping because it's free you know what i'm saying what you got to do especially now with jay writing his rhymes in his head people ain't got to pay for paper no more now everybody just feel like they finna just you know what I'm saying? Come out and be a, a, a rapper out the blue. At least with a production, you have to go up and figure out a way to get your, your equipment up and go buy records and do different things. So I'm talking about the work ethic is so serious. And up here at Baseline, up, up at The Rock, people work. The work ethic is crazy. That's why I feel like we, we killing the game right now. That's why we cutting edge. That's why we on flex every week, just question labels. That's why all you hear practically is The Rock.